What's up? This is Mark and Eddie. We're from Suicide Silence, and you are watching... Of course. Of course! Of course! <laughs> Hi, I'm Na, and we're here with Suicide Silence. Um, so, you guys are here for the first time, and there's going to be an awesome show tonight. Um, but during this current tour, you've been to a lot of places that, like, that you visited for the first time. Um, and so, like, what was it um, out there at the places that you have visited for the first time? Um, I think the only show that we've done that we've never done before is uh, yesterday, yesterday Croatia. in Croatia. Um, yeah, uh, and it was the best show of the fucking tour. Yeah, <laughs> man, it, was, uh, it was really hot but really good. It was, uh, everybody was really pumped up. And, you know, the first time you go somewhere, it's a it's an, a raw energy that doesn't really exist any other time. And uh, I already feel it today. We woke up today with a lot of hope for for today's show. So. I'm really so excited. You expect a lot. Uh, I expect for us to play well and for the crowd to have a good time. All right. So your band has like a great reputation regarding everything, <laughs> um, from your music to your relationships with um, the fans. Um, but are, do you have like any expectations, like um, like how the crowd will like react to you, and like what would make a crowd a bad crowd in your opinion? I don't really go with expectations, like, as much as it is, it's hard to go into something without expectations, but, uh, like, prime example, last night, first time ever playing in Croatia, <clears throat> it's not a big show, less than 200 people, yeah. small room, could have been a bad show to some person, but uh, me and maybe the rest of our band, it's just, like you said, you know that the first time you play there, you'll never be able to do it again. So you just go in and do the show and, and let it be what it is. And then there's like a couple of weeks ago in Resurrection Fest in Spain, like in the hills of Spain in front of thousands of people. Yeah. And the crowd is kind of just, they're into it, but there's a lot of them. And they're just standing there. Yeah. Completely different than playing in front of 150 yeah. people. Yeah. Expectation less is the best way to go. Because yeah, I mean, everybody's gonna do what they're gonna do. It's gonna be fun. Right. Yeah, I just the, the only expectation I ever go into any show is just for people to have an open mind. Right. Uh, it's you know it's really difficult for me to to think that there's musicians or fans out there of music who are just gonna close their mind to to whatever's happening on stage. You know, we're we're up there playing our asses off, sweating, really putting our hearts on our sleeves, if you don't like it, go go away, yeah. you know, if you don't like it, don't watch it, that's the only expectation I have. So your new album is called You Can't Stop Me, uh, and it's like the first album where you're present, and um, how did you fit in into the like philosophy of the band, because like every band has like a certain path that they have, like regarding music and touring and everything. Like, how do you think you fit in into it? And like, for the other members, like, how do you think he fit in? He fits in, and how he changes like everything within the band. I mean, um, I've known the guys for a long time, so as far as like the band philosophy, you know, I, without thinking about it, I, I just understood right off the bat. Uh, I guess you were, I guess, I'm trying to fully um, answer your question. It was just one of those things where it's, it was a natural fluid progression so um, it really helped that I, I was friends with everybody before and that we had toured together that it, you know we kind of wrote albums at the same time and released records at the same time at one point we even shared the same manager so a lot of the, the work ethic and philosophy comes from that and um, just being in the same circle of bands you know you, you, you just get to know each other really well um, uh, as far as like how I think I fit and what the record is really about, you know, I think the record is more about you know all of us grieving over the passing of our, our dear friend, and that's what to me that's what you can't stop me is it's it's a it's you can't stop me from joining this band, you can't stop us from continuing forward, and you can't stop Mitch's legacy. You know what I mean? You can't stop what he started. And that's that's what the album is about.
And that's where Eddie works perfectly because he answered it perfectly why he's in the band, you know? I mean, pretty much couldn't be anybody else that could fill it and do it right. And, and that's why there was no tryouts or no anything like that. It was just a smooth transition because we believed in it. It's clear that the band like has to change with time uh, and that it's a natural or like a necessary process um, to keep like being present on the scene. Um, but uh, what is it that changes you like as people and is it, um, is it music that changes the man or is it the man who is changed that's changing the music? It's, it's the man. Yeah, it's the man. It's the man. it's the man that makes the music at the end of the day. I mean, it is, you know, I feel like when we write, you know, there's a, there's a, a part of a spirit or, or an energy that doesn't exist except for when we all come together and I, we you know, we, I mean, we just started calling it the ghost, and it's something that comes out of us that maybe is coming from a place that's so deep within us that we don't even understand. But uh, I mean, as far as us changing, it all comes from life experiences, you know, good times, bad times, uh, friends passing, um, friends leaving you, girlfriends, heartache. All, everything changes you, and that's what you write about. That's what the, that's where the music comes from, and. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're just getting older, and the older we get, the, the, the more experiences we have. Yeah, I think as a younger musician, a lot of your influence is all built around the music you hear, and then once you've kind of become the musician that you are, the creative side of you starts to show more through the influence of everything. And it's like, wow, I just wrote a guitar riff that reminds me of a life experience that has nothing to do with music. So. Uh, I think as we get older, it becomes more ourselves that show through the music as opposed to the kinds of music we listen to. Yeah. Okay, so in October, you are going to be touring with Horn, yeah. which is a really great thing. Yeah, and absolutely. like, really Is that sorry. like a boyish dream come true to you? <laughs> I, I think it's a, just a child <laughs> dream come true, a, a boy or girl, man, I think it's a, it's a really cool thing. Korn, uh, is, for me, is one of the first heavy influential bands, you know, like they're the band that like showed me what what showmanship is, what art is, um, what it really extending yourself as a musician as, and as a as a person within that world, you know, um, you know, being doing movie soundtracks and uh, you know the band being so so involved with their live show and so involved with you know how their records together you know they were one of those bands that I could listen I could just turn on one song and listen to the whole record you know it was, that, that was one of the first bands that, that did that for me so for me yeah it's a big childhood dream it's it's, it's gonna be cool to be seeing them every day performing the first record that I ever listened to and I'm, I'm really stoked. What about you? It's absolutely insane yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, we. It was insane to do Mayhem with them yeah. last year, and that was like that was really big for us. And um, yeah, this one is just—it's um, a little, I don't know, perfect. It's like one of those things where it doesn't really—it's it's hard to. It's gonna be—it's gonna really hit me when I'm there when it's happening. Yeah. Because right now it's like an equal surprise around us, and we're like, whoa, they're doing that. It's like I'm still surprised too. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, what are other bands that you would like to tour with or be supported for? Slipknot. Uh, Slipknot, man. Slipknot, right. Slipknot and Slayer are two bands that I really want to hit the road with. Slayer, definitely. Um, Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Um, La La Lamb of God I'd like to tour with sooner than later. Just because yeah. they, the record that they just wrote is, I want to catch it while they're still playing it fresh. You yeah, know, that's I mean, good. I would love to go out on tour when they're playing fresh, the fresh. Record. And Metallica and Ozzy. Yeah, Ozzy would, uh, Ozzy would be a dream come true. Yeah, Morbid Angel. ACDC. <laughs> Judas Priest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, what would you consider necessary for uh, a really weak local scene to like get better? Uh, and what do you mean? What do you think like about the significance of the local scene in one place? Um, like, since you've like surpassed the phase of a local band a long time ago. Local scene's only as strong as you believe it to be. Yeah. Right. If you think it's weak, then it's weak. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I, you know, I've, I've actually, this is a good question for me because I booked shows for a while and I was really involved with my local scene. Um, the thing about where I'm from is I come from San Francisco, so San Francisco already has an embedded metal community that is unlike anywhere else. So for me, it was really easy to just start putting on shows and just use my name and for people to be like, yeah, cool, I'm going to go to Eddie's shows because I know that he's into metal and he's going to bring a good show. Um, so that always made me, that kind of made me think that if there's a good promoter who loves the music, who loves the scene, basically a guy who's been going to all the shows, knows all the people that go to the shows, and goes, hey guys, let's just put together more shows so that we can continue to bring kids from wherever the hell they come from and come, come out and make it bigger and make it bigger. You know, it, that, all that contributes. And then also having a band that wants to continue coming out, you know, and having a good relationship with, with the promoter and the bands and the booking agents. It's all. It's a community. It's a it's a community that, if you want it to grow, it will. And but if you sit there and you say we have a weak scene around here, it needs to be better. It's just going to be weak and it needs to get better. Yeah, exactly. Like the scene is only as strong as the people who are involved in it make it. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, I've I've watched I've watched so many kids at shows do this number. Yeah. And then the people around them think that it's cool to just do this, you know. If you're up there and you let the music go through you and you just give yourself into the moment and you realize that, yeah, man, this movie, music moves me, people will move too, yeah. you know? And that's, that's what the scene is. It's, it's the community together. And if, you, if you consider it a community, if you, look, if you look at it as a community, then it'll be a community. If you look at it as a competition, it'll be a competition. Yeah. We're all hive-minded, dude, and like Lemmy and Ozzy are up there just leading the way. Yeah, like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> This is a jar of Ivar, which is a homemade. My mom made it, actually. Your mother made Ivar. Mother, yeah. mother made Ivar. Yeah. I don't and know if it's, it. it's meat. No, no, no. It's paprika. Paprika? Yeah. It's Ivar. just paprika with... Uh, I don't know how it's called. The long Tomato. purple thing. Eggplant? Egg yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's vegetarian? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's completely vegetarian. And it's the all natural. The other stuff, so. the meat stuff, is what's the meat stuff called? Chivapi? Chivapi, yeah. Yeah. That was the stuff so that we put, had the other day. On, uh, put it on crackers and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you put it on bread. Bread, you put, crackers. You put it on everything. They're they're on, put it on apple. You can put it on... Can I put it on my ice cream? <laughs> Just put it on ice cream. Yeah. Can you bring me an ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> I love Puerto Rico. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it smells so good. You had it. We had it in Germany. Yeah, kind of tastes a little really olive good. It doesn't have olives though. But it kind of tastes a little. Uh, maybe it's like the oil. Yeah, yeah. olive oil. Olive oil. Probably. <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, thank you for the. Ibarra. Ibarra. It's gonna go. Oh, Ibarra. It's gonna go down my throat. Yeah. <laughs>